It's taking a while. It took a while to go live. We were chatting back for a while. Uh, good evening. Uh, not legal advice. Mr. JR and our special guest, Ham the Short Killer. It's so nice to have you uh, with us tonight. We were chatting before, and we really look forward to having the opportunity to talk to talk about uh, the items that you usually talk about. I know you usually have a call, and you talk about the same things. People ask you the same freaking questions every time, and you are gracious enough just to answer. And we're going to try and cover everything that you normally talk about, but maybe in a different way. So maybe it's a little interesting or different for people. And so first thing I'm going to say, this is, of course, not legal advice. It's not financial advice. Uh, we're going to talk about securities, but we're not recommending anything. Do your own due diligence. Some of us do own the securities we're talking about. You know, I usually don't even talk about that, but I will tonight. So I think all the securities we're going to talk about tonight, I own. So keep that in mind. I don't think I'm a pumper, but just, just so you know that I do have an interest. We try to kind of present it straight, straightforward, as you guys probably know by now, but just to be upfront about it. So uh, really nice to have uh, Ham with us. First of all, how did you get that name? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you know that neither of us are security lawyers. You probably more know more security law than us. We just kind of uh, are just going forward and, 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 and working. We're, we're working it. Uh, before I start, because I do this each each week, we do this. Uh, my half brother and I are no longer allowed to play with chainsaws. <laughs> uh, and my second one, this is in honor of Ham. If a drummer comes out of retirement, there will be repercussions. Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, so uh, could you tell us, uh, Ham, a little bit about how you got into the short side of things? How you got interested in advocating, kind of for the short positions for, I mean, against the short positions. Well, this goes back way lo a long time ago. And, uh, you know, companies were, uh, I was an institutional guy and I never really paid attention to the small caps of what was going on, but there was a, a group called the Fierro brothers that were notorious short sellers. And they used to short the stocks and terrorize the companies to, you know, to cover. And I started hearing about that. As time moved on, you know, you know, we left the industry. We tried to do different things, and uh, every stock we're playing in now is being attacked by shorts. I'm like, what's you know, what's going on? And then we we figured it out, and uh, we raised some capital, and we went to the best lawyers, and we started to figure out how to fight back. And this fight's been going on for 20 years now. Now and you, I. I, I'm sorry. You said you went to the lawyers and I'm interrupting JR. We, I apologize. We, we raised money and we paid. We went to Morgan Lewis Bacchus. We needed to get legal advice on how to fight back against Wall Street. So Not my friend knew a senior partner there. We got in the door and we paid. As long as we were paying, we were allowed to get the information. You know, they worked with us. Uh, they had their clients, I think, were Merrill Lynch, Jeffries. I, I forget the name, Johnny Montgomery. So they represented a lot of the street. And a lot of those people were not happy that we were making noise within the firm, you know, on a subject that, you know, they they wanted to keep quiet. So we kind of figured out using the senior partner how to, you know, do dividends and, you know, the tax, uh, the tax issues on issuing dividends, you know, was, you know, Richard, I don't know if you ever sat down in a, you know, a major law firm, but, you know, I Unfor sat down. unfortunately, yes. I sat down and they bring in eight guys. This is the guy from the SEC. This is our tax guy. This is this guy, dividend, you know, and they they would break down all the different uh, ways we can attack and try to find what's the best way to go after the street. So it was, yeah. I, I learned, the, I taught them what the problem was and they tried to figure it out for us. I would characterize it that they do a super intensive uh, evaluation of anything possible that might apply. And that also equates to a very large bill it, it, yeah. both ways. Yes. Um, it did. I, uh, so ironically, you mentioned Morgan Lewis and Bacchius was the firm that you we worked went with. To them, we went to them first. We, we had a senior partner that was a friend that, that left Kader Brothers. And, you know, so we had a very good connection and he was willing to help us out. So but we had to pay the bill. That was, yeah. that was you know, you don't pay the bill. That's it. You're out. So the irony is. 
you know, I, I'm an MMTLP and uh, you obviously know about MMTLP and I'm in an arbitration in the, against fidelity in MMTLP and the law firm that represents fidelity is Morgan Lewis and Bacchius and uh, Joe Florin is the partner who's in charge. So I don't know if you know who he is, no, but it, 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 it's the irony. Uh, maybe at some point in time, I'll ask them about you. I'll ask them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's, you know, that that's part of the problem, right? They, all these, uh, all these capital firms have the ability to hire these large law well, firms. Well, if you go back and look, Patrick Byrne, what he talks about, and I'll post it for you later. When he had his lawsuit against Merrill Lynch and Goldman, uh, they, Goldman, I think, hired Morgan Lewis Bacchus, and they actually made a mistake. And uh, I think it was in an elevator where they gave up some information. I'll try to dig it up for you, where they, uh, they actually made a mistake and helped Patrick Byrne uh, move the case for, forward. So, it was, you know, they did make, they do make mistakes, you know, again. So, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll dig that up for you. Okay. By the way, I see in the comments, people like the way your voice uh, on in this format, as opposed to how it usually comes across on the phone, just just so you get some feedback on well, that I, way. I, I, changing careers, I'll be singing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so, Jared, did you you wanted to? Yeah. So Ham, so that was actually the one topic I wanted to talk to you about was you've been in this now for 20, 23 years fighting this fight. What do you see as different from when you started, maybe even ten years ago, versus where we're at right now? Okay, in the beginning, the, the, the only way you can actually defend yourself from the, from the longer, the investor side, was on the Raging Bull. The Raging Bull was a message board that was controlled by the thieves and scoundrels. Retail investors, we went, you went there and they, you were attacked in a minute. There was, you know, 50 bashes to 10 longs. So it was like, you know, it was overwhelming, you know, at that point. Now... With Twitter, you know, just that I have 13,000 people following me and everyone's got people following and all communicating at a rapid pace. It's just amazing. And that is what's going to break this open because it didn't exist back then. Our voice was Patrick Byrne. He was the only guy who had the voice. We right. made noise, but Patrick Byrne made, you know, because he was a, a public official. He made noise, but they even they attacked him like crazy every day. They tried to silence him. But now they can't silence us because there's, you know, you guys broadcasting, Williams broadcasting, you know, Busy's broadcasting, Anna's broadcasting, everybody's broadcasting. We have lawyers attacking it. You know, the walls are tumbling down. I just don't know what second it's going to happen. So you have to figure out how to position yourself to take advantage of these life changing events. That's what it is. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, I, I just, I, I, you know, and Richard and I have talked about this in depth. I mean, you know, what, and I don't want to single out the MMTLP community because it's all communities, but what, what all of these communities have done with a push to get some type of resolution in MMTLP and having Senator Crapo last week literally fire off all five minutes of his time at, 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 at Commissioner Ginsler is, is phenomenal. I mean, well, that's what people don't realize. They look at right. it, nothing happened. That was unbelievable, that five minutes of time. And he actually used the word, he removed the word naked short selling. You know, again, I always tell everyone, that's Wall Street putting lipstick on a pig, trying to make it look fancy, you know, dressing it up. The real word is counterfeiting. It's not naked shorts. Naked short selling is like people look at it. What's naked short selling? They, you know, they try to confuse us with that word. So just remove it. It's counterfeiting. That's all it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so you know, in my legal filings, uh, I use counterfeiting, um, and and I use naked shorting as like the afterthought. But it's. They're they're non-existent shares. It's it's pretend. It's Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan stuff. You know what well, I mean? If you, if you look at it, it's the you're selling an unregistered security. If you go through the SEC uh, enforcement actions, you know there'll be a hundred enforcement actions. You'll see thirty or forty of them are the sale of an unregistered crypto, an un unregistered stock, or unregistered something. It's what that's the fraud. And here it is. They allow it every day in the equity markets. And, you know, they get these these small people, but these big guys are just running rampant. Yeah, I, I right. guess I, 
I, I just don't, I think, and I, I'll, I'll include myself, I just don't think people expected how difficult it is to make the change. And it just takes a concentrated, but more than anything else, a persistent effort. You just got to keep on chugging along because right. you got you got somebody who's at risk, right, for losing a shitload of money and maybe going to jail. Some fraudster is not going to decide to be a good guy overnight. He's still going to be a fraudster, and you're just going to have to combat that. That it's, Again, I personally don't understand how anybody who made a ton of money doing this over the years is staying around. How are they not running around? Every gangster, everyone hides, you know, you break out of prison, you don't walk down the streets with a flare on your head. These guys <laughs> are standing here and it's like they don't even care. The truck is in front of the SEC. The building's are all glass. We put it there 12 times and you're telling me the SEC doesn't know what's going on and you're, you're going to stand around still? Right. That right. tells you that they're doing it for more sure. So that's number one. That's what you have to understand about that. You know, Lynn Partners is not doing this. They got someone doing it offshore. Yeah, because Lynn Par Partners, I was looking up there. And by the way, uh, greetings to William and Lucky. I saw that. Um, Lynn Partners, I was looking at what kind of revenue they have. Their revenue is like a million bucks a year. They, they're they not doing, they're not making the money. Somebody else is doing it for them. Um, well, they're, they're like, uh, I'll, I'll bring it down to the street street language. They're like the pimp. They're like a pimp. They go out, get the deals, and then sell it to the street. That's what they do. They put this out in the street, and I guess they have partners that do the... If, if you just go look at, the, I put it up many times, a company called Sedona, who was naked shorted. They were shorted by, uh, the, the, the lender was AMRO, AMRO Advisors. And they hired, uh, oh, I forgot the name of them right now, I'm blank, Rhino Advisors to do the naked short selling for them. So Sedona was the public company, Amro was the lender. So just change the name, Finger, and make it Lind. It's the same thing, Sedona, Amro, Finger, Lind. In the Sedona case, it was Rhino Advisors did the naked short selling. Remember, they signed papers and say, Amro says, we won't make it short your stock. We promise. Right. But then they, their cousin, Rhino, is the one that's doing it. Yeah. So right. in the case of GTII and Lynn, Lynn is for finger. The Kramers, GTII, they got these people that do the naked short selling away from them. But it's not too far away from them because there's a lot of money when these naked shorting that's going into this big pile. And they're not just giving it to a stranger to do it, right? Because they right, have to right. their hands close to it. Otherwise, why are they doing it? Why would they take all this heat for no payday? So obviously, like the guy Savvy, management, all these guys, they do these things away and they don't get in trouble for it. Say, hey, we didn't do anything. We just signed a note. What are we doing? You know? You know it, it, it's interesting you brought up the, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if I interrupted you, JR, if I did, I apologize. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> Interesting re re regarding GTII um, and and the Kramers in terms of what FINRA has done, because obviously, uh, you know, and we've done videos, by the way, of this, the Kramers are the biggest scumbags on the planet. Really? They they literally, uh, and I and I know you like that term too. Um, you can't, and, there's nothing else you can say to describe them. I don't know. What I, I know, you know besides, the, you know, they're, and it's not like I'm like making this up. If you look at the FINRA conclusions and the trials, these are established facts. They ripped off people, and that's probably the best conduct they engaged in. And then they had like some guy who was basically convicted of a sex felony uh, that was going to be their representative. And that's up through, th that's not way back in time. That's up through the current time. And that's right. so that's, that's who the other side is, how they should be really proud of themselves that's what they represent listen, so but, we know but the, we know there uh, listen i spoke to gretchen morganson she was i was sent to her because she was after them and she wrote that story about them being loan sharks and going after people and threatening them and they have them on and she told me that the feds want these guys in jail that's how it started in gtii and i you know i gave her all the information and I don't know why she hasn't slammed them, but she told me herself on the call many times. She goes, the, the feds want these guys away. I'm like, and I said to her, I said, 
we delivered them. They're right here. Someone just pick them up. What else could we have to do? I don't even know what else to say. You know, you know Mike, my, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything, although I'm going to accuse JR of doing this, but I'm not going to accuse anything. I've had like a few times in my life, I go into a courtroom and the judge acts really peculiarly and my, my spidey sense gets picked up and I know there's something. Somebody has interfered. And listen, there has to be some exchange of compensation at some point in time amongst some people that influence the outcome of events that are surprising to us. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it happens some of the time. And I think that explains some of the conclusions. And it does piss me off that it happens. And um, it shouldn't happen. And, you know, we kind of talked about this off, off, you know, off air before. I think shorting should be illegal. I think it's immoral. Maybe there's, and I, I want to get your opinion on this, Ham, because yours is a lot more important than mine. But I think, you know, and we, you talked about it. There's a bunch of biomeds that might provide cures for diseases that our family might suffer from. And these Fs or DHs don't care. They care less. Even if it in, in, even if it would have impacted their own family, they care less. The buck is more important than the outcome of being a human being. So that's my opinion. Uh, I mean, are you are you opposed to all shorting, or do you see some benefit to it in some cases? There is no benefit. It's complete fraud. It's it's there. It, it's e it's easier to push the stock downhill. Right. They think about, you know, trying to push a boulder up a hill, how hard it is when people are buying a stock. Right. Downhill, it takes a second for that rock to roll down. So the short selling, you know, it creates all these panics, you know, the, the people bail out. It's it's so easy to do. You know, all you have to do is get a guy like Andrew left, put out a fake story and everyone attacks at the same time. They, you know, they they attack as a group. It's just not one person. These are premeditated attacks, and they come out and they and they just they just blast them down. It goes so, down so fast, you don't even know what happened. Since you've been in the industry, you know, longer than us, obviously, um, was there a time where shorting actually had a you know a real was it, there was actually a, a a strategy that was made sense? Yes, they they used to have an uptick rule where the stock had to trade up before you can short it, right? They removed it because they said that the program traders couldn't detect the up. They needed. They didn't know how to short using the uptick. They made some stupid, some, some stupid ruling on that, and they and they protected the uh, the high frequency traders at that time. So they removed it. So now, if you want to short a stock, you just hit the bids, hit the bids, hit the bids, hit the bids, and if you don't deliver it, you just keep doing it. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Do you think that when they when they changed the rule, do you, do you think they knew that was going to be the outcome or they were just incompetent? I think they were incompetent. They listened to Wall Street. They, they approved it, got it through. And they, they, the SEC said that companies, if the shorts attack it, will eventually find a level that the institutions will step in and buy the stocks. Like, for example, if Apple goes down to 150, you know, Apple's value is really 160. So it's trading below value institutions will step in and put this, you know, the, will stop the downward slide, right? Right. But when you have a small stock and there's no institutions, who's stopping what? There is nothing. We have no institutions yeah. in these names. Institutions like Fidelity, when the stock runs, they sell some. When it pulls back, they buy it. So they add support. In the small caps, there's nobody here. It's the, you, it's the retail. Once you buy it in retail, you know, everybody could buy 5,000 shares. Once you buy it, you're done. And then that's what they take advantage of us and they kill us. But before we talk about, because we're gonna, we're obviously going to talk about GTII, Finger, MMTLP, those three in particular. But I, I you know, Elon Musk, uh, I'm a, I own Tesla stock also, and I'm a big fan of Tesla and the, and the technology and his innovation. And um, he... My understanding is that Tesla is the most shorted stock, at least for the last three months. It's the most shorted stock on the market. And I know at some point in time, they try to kill it. They try to kill Tesla. And he was able to somehow manage to save the company. And he's anti-shorting. I mean, he's come out and said it specifically. So 
Is there any like strategy that you could suggest that he could undertake him personally? Yes. He's, a, he, he's the guy we need to step up. He should, when his stock was a thousand dollars, when it was, everything was great before they started these raids, he should have taken his stock that he can't sell anyway. He's got so much money and given investments to a lot of these small biotechs, at least, you know, throw his name attached to it, right? Take, Take the take the worry about money off their backs. He never did anything. So again, he hates the SEC. I I relay to his people to give out a special dividend. At the time, I said give out a share of SpaceX. By the way, thank you, thank you. For what? For, for the special dividend. I have oh. uh, Tesla's Tesla so stock. So Tesla should thank give you. out a spare a, sh a share of SpaceX to each investor of uh, Tesla. The short cannot deliver a share of SpaceX, and every investor in uh, uh, Tesla would want that special dividend, right? People would buy it. If he did that, the stock would be $5,000 in a minute. If he gave out a share of Twitter, that's another a private property that he owns. If he were to give out, the shorts can't deliver a share of Twitter. The brokerage firms can't give you a share of Twitter or journal it because it'd be Ill illegal, right? So again, he controls it. He can end it in a minute. I don't know why he hasn't done it, but he controls it because he has value. We can do it with smoke and mirrors. He can do it with real value. So if he wanted to do it, he can kill him in a minute. Yeah. One thing I would suggest, and I, 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 I put this on uh, X before we went on, is uh, X. his desire for X is to be an all-encompassing platform, including it being a financial platform. I think he should set up an exchange on X that does not permit shorting and he should, that should be, that should be an alternative exchange. Uh, I, you know, they drag him in different directions. You know, when he focused on the SEC and short selling, you know, he, they get dragged someplace else. They, the SEC subpoenaed him. They went after him and, you know, they sort of, you know, they, they do it to everyone. They, they drag it to a different, like right now the SEC, keeps dragging out that they're trying to get every bet everyone that better pricing and that this all this stuff is good for you with your dark pools and all that you know they, they keep changing the subject and the subject is all one thing just settle the stupid trades yeah i'll pay a commission i don't need to have free commission give me i'll pay for a commission but settle my trades that's yeah. you know, that's how it yeah. used to, you know but now they just it's just they, they all they keep trying to tell you you're going to get a better price Better price, yeah. then as soon as you buy it, it's lower. But, that, but you paid a good price. For but it. you didn't pay anything for it, so don't worry about yeah, it. That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, yeah. Obviously, in this world, you never get anything for free, right? So zero yeah. is a zero is minus. That's what that There's is. No free lunch. But again, yeah. Just think about GameStop. It was all over the newspapers. Hey, hey Ham. You, you did a anywhere. you did a report. You did a report on that, right? Hey, Ham, hold on. Richard, let me interrupt you. Ham, did you call into your conference line? No, I did not. Yeah, there's people in there waiting on you. Ugh. All right, you want, I'm going to try to do it. Let me try. Give me a second. Sure. Okay. Sure. I'm going to do a little dance. See, Richard, this is why I told you I'd read the comments. Oh, that's good. Actually, I can see, for some reason, I can see the comments today. Yeah, well, you know, we can, we can make comments now. I see that, too. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it was that's pretty cool. That's Hold purely on, by accident. Yeah, Hold to on, all man. the people who are on comments, thank you for uh, your comments. I actually can see them for some reason tonight, and we can comment. That's wonderful. Um, <laughs> he forgot to call in. <laughs> well, we were so scintillating. How could he remember yeah, to call in? That. Yeah. I typed in a wrong number. Give me a second. No problem. So we're going to talk about while while he's doing that. We're going to end up. We're going to talk about finger motion. We're going to talk about GTII. We're going to talk about MMTLP. Um, and just to bring everybody up to speed. So part of the, or I think the two stocks that um, Ham is in right now, or at least heavily in, are finger motion and GTII. They are, both are apparently shorted. Finger Motion is an ongoing bit telecommunications company. 
based in Malaysia that has business in China. I it has. It Singapore. Uh, um, yeah, Singapore. Yeah, sorry. Singapore, but doing business primarily in China. So it has an ongoing business. It reflects increased revenue. Sounds like it, the business itself is will be successful. Um, but the but besides that, there is also an issue of uh, shorting, naked shorting, and that's the same thing that happens in GTII. I don't know if Ham is back. I, 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 I'm working on it. Give me a second. Yeah. Okay. We can hear it. So, so yeah, I can continue on this part. So. GTI is kind of a twin to finger motion. For whatever reason, there's a lot of common stock ownership. So they kind of run similarly. Originally, I think people thought that GTII was going to run before finger motion, but now it appears otherwise. It right. it's up about, I think up max about 600 percent something like that from the bottom. Uh, I think it in the current run, it topped out around eight, and now after hours on Friday is was six forty. That good so far? Yep, you got it right on the nose. Okay, um, so so um, so tell us a little bit how you got interested in finger motion. Finger motion. I uh, the company was a uh, a gaming company. And uh, friends of mine told me about it, and we went to China to see see the company, and uh, they were doing gaming, and I had no interest in it because I don't play I don't play games on my phone, so it was basically it was a non-event. Six months later, I heard that they were getting the telecom contract to for all the payment processing on the cell phones. Everyone has to pay prepay their phone bills in China, so it's like buying a you know a debit card. And you get your edge of minutes to your phone. So if they're going to get into that business, we all know no one's going to leave home without their phones. And it just built into that. I thought that would be something that was interesting that these guys were going to get, you know, the, the payment processing for China. That was it. And then the stock started going, got listed on the NASDAQ and Lynn Partners and the shorting. And it just got into a shit show. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And I was just looking for something that would just go up. I thought this would be my Apple computer, you know, that I had, right. to, that I figured out something that before anybody else did, that this is going to be a big company and it's turned into such a shit show. I wish I would have just thrown my money in the ocean and stop wasting my time some, you know, but again, <laughs> you know, I'm in five years now here and, you know, I studied it and I'm not a long-term holder, but I thought this stock would be a hundred dollars stock on its own. Right. And it just completely manipulated trash every day and it makes me sick because i met the people behind the company and they're all good people they have no idea of the you know the the root the the, the animals on wall street and what they're trying to do to them it's just unbelievable so you know i have friends family in it and you know i says hey, screw this i'm going to stand up and fight for it i didn't know i had a buy a stock, pay for a stock, and then have to come <laughs> it, defend it. I didn't know how to do that. I don't know. That was part of, uh, I don't see that in my statement that the brokerage firm, that you must fight 24 seven to protect your investment. I, I know it's, I know you say, you know, it doesn't bother you, but you know, you see the Twitter X environment and people are about everything. There um, is, no. there's always a side that are bashers of whatever. And it's difficult for most no, people. Listen, again, it's, it's, listen, they're here to undermine you. I lived through the beginning of it. You got, listen, we have 13,000 people that are pro the company and there's six or seven or 10 idiots, right? That's our call. Right. Go back in time where there was 10 longs and 900 crooks. You want to go into a fist fight, go out there, go on the raging bull, go back to the year 2003 where there was nothing but thieves and scoundrels there bashing you, undermining everything, 24-7. You right. couldn't get a word in. So it's very different. And I think that people don't understand what, the, you know, what, uh, what Twitter has done and everybody banding together. Listen, I read some of the stuff that people post about AMC and GameStop. I mean, these people are digging up stuff that's at Susan Trimbat's level. And she's brilliant. She worked at the DTC. 
So like yourself, you have attorneys digging into things. There's very smart people digging in a lot of different ways into naked short selling, undercovering, you know, uh, uh, unearthing a lot of dirt that I didn't even know about. You know, I look at it the basic way. We can only buy 100% of the company. How could we have 170 million shares short? Pretty easy. I mean, at that point, you know, who cares how they're doing it? Someone's right. got to fix it at some point, right? Yeah. Yes. The, right. the the easiest thing to do without lawyers fighting. Listen, you have to bring the lawyers on because you have to shoot some. You have to send a message to the bad guys. We're not going away. So that's why Wes and you know Mark Bazil are here. All these guys are here because they do help out. But the real thing is that if the shorts thought they can win, they let the stock go higher, short it at fifteen, twenty, have a party. Right. But they can't because margin does exist and it will kill them. That's the, the, that's the game. So I look at the game as saying, okay, they have to run out of money sooner or later. The company Finger Motion is not going out of business. It's fully funded. They brought on a new banker. What they do and how they attack it, I don't know. But again, they're pretty well known as uh, short killers. They murdered the shorts. Right. So I'm with you. We're all looking to try to time this thing, all right? You know how hard it is to time when a stock is going to go? If it was so easy, go pick another stock and tell me which one you have. Let me yeah. Give it to me. Let me see when you could time it. That's how hard it is. Yeah, it's impossible. And, and I was going to say is that I think, you know, it just reflects the, you know, expectations that people have and the anxiety that people have. And, you know, it's the market psychology, right? So the opposite side will push us into a position that's uncomfortable because they want us to cave, to sell our shares, and to move on. That's, um, that's, that's, at least that's my view. That's my view. That's the whole game. There's not, <laughs> that's one, I put up you know, from 2005, the Bash's handbook. I put it up there. All they're here to do is to, to go after the people that are weak and get them to sell. That's all. They sell the stocks, and they never – buy it back. And you say, how do you know that? Well, every day they're shorting 60%. So that means they're not covering. So if they're shorting 60%, and this is everyone listening to this, if the stock is seven and they short it down to six, they're not going to buy it back at seven because they'll be out of business in no time. So that's how you know they're not covering. They're pressing their bets, trying to push it down. They don't cover anything. They do some <laughs> crazy wash trades they, they 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 may sell some to themselves one trick that you guys don't even know about is they they sell 10,000 shares to someone who's bidding who's themselves the guy who buys it let's say it's 6 to 6 and a quarter they sell 10,000 at 6 it looks like someone just bought 10,000 shares at 6 right then mm -hmm. the guy who paid 6 for 10,000 he turns around and sells it at 590 so they just keep selling the same stock. You know, it's like kiting a check. It's just, yeah. and, and they use and they use the same stock that just keeps selling it lower. That's all they're doing. Yeah, it's just perpetuating the fraud that they already committed. That's, that's all they're doing. It, and it's yeah. easy to see. And it's hard to sit there and say, oh my God, you know, I own 90,000 shares and I'm down, you know, a dollar. You know, I'm down $90,000 in a blur over some guy washing stock and selling it back and forth. And I can't support it. What do you do? Yeah. So now this then down to six, you lose a hundred grand, and you're like, you you don't think you're pissed off about it watching this, and no one else sees it. Of course, it gets everybody mad. Yeah. Univest Univest is is in uh, the finger motion play, correct? That is correct. Yeah. So I was listening to Avid Trader a little bit, and he was today, and and we uh, Jr. and I kind of on Friday, there was a little bit of confusion as to the effective date of that S three. And we concluded that it's not effective until it's actually posted as effective on the Edgar uh, system. And it hasn't been posted yet. And Avid agreed with that today on, on his video. But what was, was interesting is he compared the, the rate of success of Lynn Partners versus Univest. In other words, whatever securities that Lynn Partners touched turned to absolute direct. And that's not positive, by the way. <laughs> and Univest, there were a bunch of securities that did very, very well shortly after they got involved. Well, and, it seemed, and, and I don't know, by the way, so this is just me guessing.
but it appeared that if I was going to look at Univest, what they do, they certainly seem to support the longs in attacking shorts. That was just my view. I don't know that for a fact, but there's a lot of dissonance Evan. out there and comments that suggest to the contrary. I think Univest is a, a wonderful thing that have happened to finger motion and whatever other securities have been touched by them. Well, just look at it. That's what Elon Musk should be doing. That's what Bill Gates should be doing. That's what Warren Buffett should be doing. Carl Icahn should be doing it. Carl Icahn only fights for his own ass when the shorts attack them, right? Right. Right away he's crying. No, they're attacking me. And they don't help anyone else. We need people like those to step up and help out these small companies. It doesn't have to be GTII or finger motion. Go help a cancer company. Right. Elon Russ, you could be worth trillions of dollars. It doesn't mean anything. Look at Steve Jobs. He would have done anything to stay alive, correct? Right. Yeah. Where is he? Dead, right? Yeah. All the money Great. in the world doesn't mean anything. And I that's the thing that bothers me the most is that, like you said before, these guys don't care about anything. They don't care about their own family members. God forbid someone gets sick. They couldn't kill us. And to me, that's a disgrace because everyone on this call has a family member that has an issue, whatever it may be. And look at Celine Dion. She's dying. She has no cure. No one's whatever she has. They have no medicine to help her out. How about and, how about there was a small company that was working on it, whatever it is, and they went out of business because of guys like Savvy or Lynn or Yorkville or whoever else is here. All these cannibals. And it's got to. It, it's you know we don't know specifically because there's so many companies that got wiped out. But out of that group of, you know, I'm making up numbers, but if there's a hundred companies got wiped out, there might've been five that had cures for diseases and we will never know. And people would have needlessly died because of that or suffered. And these guys, you know, maybe they're oblivious to it, but they certainly with their capital could cure diseases. There's no they, question about it. It's, well, it's a, I look at, look at the company Northwest Bio and WBO. I don't know, and people do. I tried to help out them years ago, and they're working on, I think it's brain cancer. My good friend who had to sign up on, I always put him up, Wall Street Court counterfeiting shares, he died of brain cancer. He was a- The, glio the was glioblast glio glioblastoma, that one? Right, right. So yeah. again, and CVM, Charlie Victor Mary, is working on head and neck cancer. His stock is always under attack, all right? And, but the CEO keeps taking money to try to stay alive. So he has no choice because they know he needs money. But, you know, I didn't, you know, what's head and neck cancer? I never knew it until my friend got it. Right. And they cut half his jaw out and half his tongue. He's alive. But just look at the devastation from it. Right. And only, you know, and here's a guy who stocks at dollar forty or dollar fifty. Yeah, there's enough cap there's enough capital available to solve these problems. Listen, the and capital available, Richard, is for companies like Netflix. So we can watch, <laughs> so we can sit at home and watch more TV. That's what it's about. They want it. That's what they're funding. They want Netflix, Home Depot, Costco. We can get more cheese. We can go buy more hammers and wheelbarrows, whatever it is. And when companies that actually can save your life, no one gives a shit. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But listen, they don't care about shorting and the impacts when I go to Vegas, whenever I did, I don't go very often now, but, and I would play craps. I would watch the guy who played the don't pass line. He's the guy who's shorting the stock. He's like against everybody else, against everybody else's interest. It really is disgusting. Honestly, the most, and again, well, listen, maybe, I, I, I'm a crap player. I play dice also. And to watch a don't player, that doesn't bother me because he's <laughs> actually standing there in front of me and he's he taking there. his bets, which is okay. Yeah. These guys are hiding behind the computer offshore. And I always said, if they want to rob people, come to the street. And listen, there's a couple of people that would love you to go face to face. And let's see you rob them face to face. Be a man about it. If you want to rob us, stop hiding behind the computer and come out. Like savvy management. That guy, Hal Mintz. Come on right. out, Hal. Come out here. Rob all these. I put up before. That guy robbed 75 companies he was in behind. 75. The one Listen, the bet. You know, one we bought a built an apartment for ten million dollars. They could probably rob a couple of hundred million. The best thing that could happen, obviously, to the industry is if a couple of those guys went to prison, right? That well, would well, that well, would dis that would discourage that misconduct. 
The, most, with, the with, funny thing about it is that they caught this guy savvy management. The SC said he had a naked short selling scheme. To me, that's jail right there. Scheme. That's what right. the SC said in, in their complaint. Spoofing and spoofing is put a guy from JP Morgan in jail. Spoofing, fake trades back and forth. This guy's got a scheme to defraud people and you're letting him run around? I don't understand it. Where's the well, that that Sorrento Therapeutics case, that which, which is a cancer company. Right. And in yeah. that case, the naked shorts got, you know, it, it was a solution, but the naked shorts got to close their positions in the bankruptcy anonymously. They had to pay probably more than they liked to, but they got out anonymously. Right. Um, and, you know, so, so, you know, it cost them a few bucks, but they kept their business. And, these guys ultimately jail is one aspect that is uh you know very motivating alternatively if you lose all your money and you lose your business that's also motivating and unfortunately the regulators both the SEC and Finra they do jack in terms right. of doing their job in terms of imposing penalties and most of all the thing that i don't think most people realize they do nothing about collecting the money so even if you get some kind of award, you're on your own. Go get it. Oh, that's <laughs> well, that's why we're taking it and we're fighting back a different way. We're not when the companies that I follow are still trading. We documented the numbers. The numbers go up every day. You know, we the gentleman uh, Dozer, the LSU guy, posts the data every day at five thirty. You're an LSU uh, uh, LSU fan, right? Isn't that the team that you follow? No, that LSU is... Uh, I was kidding. I was a joke, son. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there's great people doing different things. We post the information. It comes straight from FINRA. We're not making it up. So for those right. who think that we're pumping up fake numbers, it's right there. It comes out every day from FINRA. I have nothing to do with it. It's posted right there. The number has to be zero when they stop selling short, correct? At least I. that's how I figured it out, right? I would think. Right. I guess. No more short selling zero. Oh, then that means they're starting to cover right now. All we keep saying is the number is 60 percent, 65 percent, 70 percent. When you flood the market with counterfeits, if they did that to the twenty dollar bill, the hundred dollar bill, the whole economy would co co collapse. Correct. Yeah. The government catches you with a fake 20. They put you in jail. Right now, Lynn Partners has counterfeited 170 million shares at six dollars. You have a billion dollar crime right now. And and let let's flesh that out a little bit because we're starting to see a lot of these bank statements and people are starting to pay attention to them. And I don't remember what bank it was, but the the one that I saw posted here a few weeks ago was, I think it was Bank of America. 563 billion securities sold, but not yet purchased. I mean, what are your thoughts on, you know, these banks, they know they're in the hole, you know, they know these bonds that, that had an interest rate, these long-term bonds aren't mature or have no interest rate. They're 30 years out. They're, they're in the hole there. Do you think these banks are now looking at the situation going, well, we might as well just keep at it because, you know, at some point the system's going to collapse and the government's going to come in and bail us out again. That's that's the only thing I it's the only thing I can think of them. That's what they're doing. The system is so broken and this has gone on for so long. I don't they don't know how to fix it. But the I think the SEC is allowing us to clean the clocks of Lynn Partners and the Kramers because they've given us enough information. They know the truck is there. They know what we're doing. They're not right. Yeah, it's, and it started with that uh, FOIA reply where they inadvertently gave those uh, documents. It was a small number of documents, but it was enough to show that there were discussions about fraud that were occurring between SEC and FINRA, and it raised, obviously, oh, a... God, that, that was the greatest document. Pat Burns spent $30 million fight, fighting Goldman and Merrill, and he got nothing. Think yeah. about that. These guys got... Someone sent that in and hit a direct hit, and they gave him the information. Yeah, that, somebody... Yeah, I think somebody delivered a gift, honestly. Yeah, that's, it's a hundred percent because now the SEC is exposed, FINRA is exposed. They discussed it. They said they did a blue sheet investigation. If you look, I've been posting about blue sheet investigations for years, telling everybody that's how you do it. Right. So if they did it. They know how big the short is. We're hearing through the representatives from uh, people in DC 
you know, they have people that work under the senators that signed that in the Senate banking. There's 30 people in each one of these senators' offices. So they're talking that there's 600 million shares is the naked short. And they're starting to think that if they're here, they're everywhere. So Yeah, that's the, that's the scary part for them, right? They, you know, if they really peel back the onion, it's a disaster, that right? Is correct. That is, yeah. that was what I believe is happening. And I think the SEC is doing everything they can to tap dance and drag this out. All right. But the MMTO people are great. They're fighting back. And, you know, for people who bash me from the MMTLP community, excuse me for raising my voice. I introduced them to Charlie Payne, John Berder. I got him on there. I know John Berder. I got you West Christian, all right? I did numerous things behind the scenes that you don't know about besides going to D.C. and handing out information, fighting for MMTLP. So for those clowns that ever say that I've done something, I don't even own the stock. I have nothing to do with it. I know people that do. And I take my time for my family to help you out. So please. If you got a problem with me, get lost. Go yell at somebody else. I couldn't kill us. Yeah, I, I we appreciate your efforts, and yes, you know, we we, we, we kind of believe that any exposure is good exposure for everybody. Yeah, everybody. No, listen, I, I do believe that the MMTLP is the stock that's going to bring. I believe that's going to be on the cover of the Wall Street Journal one day soon about that six hundred million shares. Because if you look at it. The guy, Matt Levine, who did the story on Dole Foods, D-O-L-E, right. the pineapple company, I attacked him for years. That, that clown never responded. And he did one story that naked short selling doesn't exist. The next day, they caught the guy savvy. I mean, so he's a real right. idiot. You yeah, know, you, know, you know, what's funny is he is in the answer to it, in my fidelity arbitration that Morgan Lewis filed. They attached a copy of that article in support of their position right and the next day savvy management gets caught with a naked short sell yes. scheme listen all you have to do is go read the police blotter merrill lynch ubs webb bush they all do it every one of them yeah. got caught and paid fines even yeah. goldman sachs recently they wrote the wrong tickets i mean come on these guys got trillions of dollars at their disposal and they all they do is make mistakes on Short sales, you know, long sales, short sales. It's the whole thing's a disgrace. Yeah, all you do have to do is, you know, set a fine system that imposes a real punitive fine, and it's it, it's graduated. So if you do it once, you pay a buck. If you do it a hundred times, you pay ten billion dollars. You know, at some point in time, you got to learn. You have to have compliance. You run a business, and you got to know what you're doing. And if you right. don't, you shouldn't be running the business. They shouldn't be in business. Whoever's in charge, they should say, come in and say, okay, whoever's in charge of this division, if you, if you, if you do anything illegal, you're going to go to jail. Do you want to take this job for a million dollars? Yes or no? That's how it has to be. They need to put Captain Bly in charge of that department. <laughs> Someone that's going to you know, crack the whip. And if anyone's committing fraud, they're going to give them up and go to jail. That's what has to happen. I, and, I know... I'm sorry. I'm so you understand that stock loan is no one. It's it's unregulated. No one watches it. it they, it's the wild west, you know. So these are areas on Wall Street that when you talk about short selling, getting back to it, if it's good, it would be good if it was actually regulated. There is no regulation. It's the wild west. Every aspect of it is criminal. And that's where they. That's where a lot of those brokerages make a good amount of their. Income, Pat right? Burton has a video. William, right. William, can you, William, if you're listening, please put it back up. Pat Burns video. Where Hi, William. Goldman Sachs makes 75% of their money from stock loan. That's where their money is. They're a stock loan department. That's what Goldman Sachs is. They're a bank, but they are really just a stock loan department. That's where they so, make all the money. Yeah. I, and I don't understand, you know, that, that it, I find that confusing because in essence, you're, you go to a broker they finance the guy who's trying to make your stock worthless. How does that work? How is that not a conflict? How is that? How is that? I have a better reasonable? one for you. When before Pat Burns stock took off over stock, Morgan Stanley took a, I think it was a five or 10% stake in Overstock. Overstock went from, you know, five bucks to 128. They never sold a share. 
the stock went from 128 always back down never sold a share went back up again never sold a share went back down never sold a share went back up and finally after about five six years they sold their position what they were doing is using the stock that they purchased when the stock went up everybody wanted to short it they would charge them an enormous fee to borrow their own shares so they would short the stock they would get making a fortune lending out their own shares, not your shares, their own shares, drive the stock down. They were making all the fees because everyone needed to short it. And when it got down, they call it all in, take all the stock back in and they squeeze it back up and do the same thing over and over again. Morgan Stanley did that. Uh, and obviously, probably, it, if, it, if it wasn't down. illegal, it should be. Yeah. I, just saying, I reported that a thousand times. That's what they were doing. Well, so, you know, again, in my, I'm not leveling accusations, but I, in those situations, you got to believe that somebody gets compensated and that's the only reason why people get away with that. that. Well, when they come to you and the stock's 128, you can't borrow a share. And Richard, we walk in and say, okay, I want to borrow a million shares to short. And they say, okay, you know what? You're going to have to pay us each day you borrow it. We want $2 a share. And you say, yeah, I'll give it to you. It's going to drop 50 points. I'll give it to you. So you're short six days and they already made $12, right? On right. Their shares. And right. that's what they were doing, $12, $13. Yeah. And they just keep, every day you stay short, you got to pay them. And that's what they were doing. So at the end of the day, the stock drops 60, the short makes 30, and Morgan Stanley's making 30. Good deal for them. That's what they were doing. There you go. Yeah. It's unregulated. They could do whatever they like. There you go. So you, I, if I, you know, and I listen to you quite a bit. So you believe, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but you believe ultimately that the MMTLP situation will resolve positively for be, the shareholders. I, I think it's going to be the biggest story to hit Wall Street. Okay. I and I, you, yeah, you you have a documentary, or you're affiliated with some kind of documentary. Yes, we're gonna do. We're gonna make cartoons. We're gonna make the all the bad guys, the Simpsons. We're, no, I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> we're working on it right now. Uh, I, you know, which I don't want to give too much up. The, the trailer should be out shortly, and uh, and the uh, actually documentary should start coming out uh, next month, I believe. I think Jr. lives in the trailer, so they at least they have something in common. That's uh, <laughs> uh, so. And it's, so the the headline should, it, which I believe it's. It, it is. I have no, you know, we, I give the information, but uh, it's the counterfeiting of the U.S. equity markets. That's the uh, that's the headline. We're going to hit you know, right in the eyes. Well, it, and it's getting, you know, interesting. We kind of talked about this in the beginning, kind of throughout your career, how things have changed. You know, if we talked about this 15 years ago, people would think we were full of shit, right? They think no, we people, were. People understood it, but we couldn't communicate like we're doing now. It, it didn't exist. Yeah. So now, now I think it's accepted as it occurs. Now the question is how to get it resolved. I don't even think that it's a question about its existence anymore. Everyone knows it exists. How do you break them? How do you get this over the hump? Right? So I think that finger motion is going to get over the hump first, only because they got some powerhouse people behind it. Now the people that invested in finger motion, people that I know, what's our plan? I think I gave everybody the plan. We're going from here. We're going to go to GTII. That's that's our plan. Because if we work here, we believe that that one's going to fold next. That's it. Right. There's nothing but else the, am, am I correct in in this part that it's kind of impossible to tell the when that will happen? That that's it, the guesswork it, part? It's impossible. I, it, you know, I know most people are younger here, but going back in time, Richard, you you know, you probably get it. There was a TV show called Candid Camera, right? Sure. And they, the headline of the show was when you least expect it, right? Smile, right. you're on Candid Camera. So, well, this is the stock market on a short squeeze, when you least expect it. And that's why I tell everyone, please use a good till cancel because when you never know when it's going to go, you just don't know. Yeah, and you're, and that's a good point because maybe that'll, that'll help people also because you kind of, when it comes to stocks that might squeeze, you profess not to put limit, I mean, not to put, um, yeah, limit, limit orders in to get, so you get, you get no, you, basically you're, limited you're out. Your, you're putting your order in before it goes. For example, if you were in Kodak 
Kodak ran from $2 to 60 in two days and right back down. If you had a good till cancel order out there, let's say at $45, you didn't miss it. You sold it. If you were sitting here and then said, hey, sell my stock at 45 as it's dropping, you'll never get it off. Right. So that's why I try to tell you, put it in before. I'm right. trying to tell you to be smart about how this works. If your order is not out there and it's a fast market, you'll never sell them. That's what happens. Yeah. So I guess, you know, us who lack the experience of actually participating in a short squeeze, a real one, my my guess is the numbers are moving so fast That's what that happens. it's it's just it it kind of dizzy. It makes you dizzy. And if you don't have if you're not prepared, it will overwhelm you and confuse you. It happens so fast. Most of you are going to wet your pants. That's how fast <laughs> it's going to happen. I've, listen, I've seen professional guys do it. It's it, when you catch it, it's like hitting the lottery. Look at my stock go. It's going, going. You know, instead of selling when it's going, you're sitting there cheering it on, and then all of a sudden it stops and it falls like a rock. And you say, "Wait a second! I just <laughs> it went up fifteen dollars and it's up two now. Why didn't yeah. I sell it?" Well, if yeah. you put your orders out there, you would have sold them. Yeah, but 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 you profess you got, you got to have your orders in beforehand just to protect yourself and not lose out on because you think I mean the way you talk about finger motion and GTII at least this is your view that these are like once in a lifetime opportunities. Um, so if if that turns out to be correct and you get screwed so you make a dollar fifty that would be really upsetting I would think. I think that if you I, I, I try to tell people, listen, I don't know how high it's going to go. Based on the numbers and what we see, I think it can go high. But you need to have your orders. If you made a dollar fifty and that's what you wanted to make, God bless you. Move on. That's the way it goes. But the way to really make big money on a short squeeze is, is to keep putting numbers out there. You sell it, sell 200 at eight, 214, 220, 230. And you say, well, I got 500 shares. I got all my money off the table now, and I got 500 shares that I can let go, right? Let it run. Right. That's how you make the real big money, because then you could sell 160 and say, oh, I got 400 left. I can sell 180. And you say, I got 300 left. I can sell 100 at 100. And I can hold on to 200. And if it goes to 1,000, God bless me. That's how you got to look at it. But meanwhile, yeah. you have all your money and profit in your pocket already. And that's how you can sit there and let these things go. The poor people that held on to GameStop that watch it go to 500 back all the way back down, they did not do that. No one advised them on anything. They just thought it was going to continue forever. Wall Street gave you the gift from the gods and people didn't take advantage of it. That's the problem. And well, let's, and let's, let's flesh that out a little bit because I, I was in, I was, I was part of that Reddit group back in 2019, all the way through 2020 and then into January, 2021. And I will tell you, Ham, we didn't know shit about squat back then. So it's a little different now. I think people now understand how this all works we're certainly far more educated uh, than we were back oh, then. Oh, there's the magic word, education. I say that every day, correct? Yeah, I, you do. I know. And th th that's what makes, I'm just going to take a second, that's what makes GTII and finger motion very different than every stock on the board. Education. Everyone and is educated about it. So when it does happen, you know to sell a little as it starts to go to make your money back. You know to let it run a little bit. And because of that, people will hold on to their position and work out of it without the pressure of saying, oh, I own 10,000 shares. Right. I'm going to hold on till I can ring the bell. Imagine having 4,000 shares. You sold six. You had enough to buy a house already. And you got 4,000 shares left and you can really let it go. And that's the life-changing stock that you can own. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what people talk about. It's interesting you say it that way because I once you remove that risk, you can make decisions without that pressure. You make better decisions, and you and you do better. A hundred percent. It's very easy to play the game when your money's off the table and you're in the black, and you still have stock for free. You have stock. Yeah. Don't get me wrong; it's not free, but you cannot be embarrassed on Wall Street of breaking even on a trade.
that's right. part right. of that's part of life. You break even sometimes, kiss your ass that you did it and say, Wow, I broke even on this one. And you know what? I'll start over. If you don't ever let a trade go up, pull back, and turn it into a loser. Never let a winning trade turn you into a loser. That's the key. And with finger motion, the stock has gone up. People bought options. I screamed every day at people to sell and roll up to cheaper options so you own them for free. I can't trade for you. I gave you the best advice I could possibly give you. A lot of people did that. A lot of people didn't. And those people are upset that they lost money in options. The option market maker is a hundred times worse than anything else that you're ever going to deal with. Yeah, I'll, I know for myself, just I'll, I'll admit to it, I'm a terrible option player. So if I break even on my calls, I consider that a huge victory. And uh, I had a bunch of I had a bunch of calls, a six dollar calls, September September six dollar calls, and I did made some money on some and lost a little money on others. But it is tough, and it's it, it's I think it's a lot. It gives you a lot more flexibility in a way if you buy the shares. You don't have to worry about that deadline. You know, you you can wait for the good times. That that uh, is very. You did the right thing. That's number one. Okay. Option pricing changes. That's a first. Option prices change every second. The stock could be doing nothing, could be unchanged. And the option change the options could be changing as though the stock is running 50 points. You know, you're paying premium. Premium is a number that's made up. Right. It's what people buy, you know, if you want to sell a sports ticket, it's whatever someone wants to pay for it. It's all you know, it's just, it's a, it's like an open outcry market, whatever you want to pay for it. You want in, I'll sell it to you at a dollar. As soon as you buy it at a dollar, it's offered at 80 cents. It's not worth that anymore. That's the right. way it goes. It's like you, you also, yeah, I, I was going to say, you taught me a lesson that if you're going to buy options, let's say, and let's just use the finger motion example. So if I had September's and I wanted to buy October's, you said, wait for the Monday after the expiration of the September. So you're not paying that little extrinsic premium. You'll right. get a much lower price and you're obviously in a better position. Right. People have that. And I think the tendency is not to wait. We want to get it We because we're all excited. We don't want to wait. But from a economic standpoint, you why pay for that premium that you don't have to pay for? That's they mark it up on a Friday. They know people are going to sell September and buy October, so they hold the premiums up. Right now, I looked at the options, and they're super expensive. If you would have purchased the October calls that you would have paid for the let's say the nine dollar calls, you could have paid a dollar fifty for them. You could have bought the the September's, the ones that expired. You paid thirty cents or forty cents for them. Now, from a dollar fifty. They're going to open up tomorrow, probably at 50 cents. You'd be down a dollar. So you lost 40 cents. If you bought the Octobers, you'd be down one dollar. So, so you're basically done. You're done before you started. So what I like to do is I like to buy the front month. That's the way I, I would play it. You play the front month because it's cheaper. There's not much premium on them. All right. And if you make money, I like to roll up to the cheaper options for free. You do listen. I had a guy, you know, I pretty open. I told the guy he, he did it a thousand times. He had a thousand calls expire, worthless, but he did it for free. If the stock would have went from eight dollars to twenty, all right, he would have walked away making a million dollars without paying for anything. He got them for free. That is option trading. That's how you do it. That's how you make. That's how you can make a million, two million dollars with without a penny. He did it for free. He yes. used the profit from his trades to roll up and get cheaper calls. And he just kept doing it because if it did work, we all thought it would, it, it would make you millions of dollars. That's what yeah. the that's what options are for. Yeah, free is a good price. And I guess if you that get free, best. yeah, if you get free a bunch of times, it only has to hit once, right? One time you walk away making two or three million dollars, and you say, Wow. This really does work. And I have to tell you, back in my day when I was doing it, you hit you hit quite a few times. Yeah. That Somebody asked, I'm not gonna I'm gonna answer the question. Somebody asked Ham if uh 
he thought Univest was going to crush the shorts. All we can go on is based on what they said. You know, yeah. uh, Avid Traders put a great video together about all the things they've done. All right. Go look at Goldman Sachs. Does Goldman Sachs do that sort of stuff? I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere. Morgan Stanley doesn't. They don't recommend stocks and squeeze shorts. These guys come out and destroy shorts. So what brought yeah. them here? You know, I don't know them. What brought them here? Maybe it was the Lynn Partners story all over the street. I don't know. And listen, it's for them. It's a good business. It's not. They're not doing uh, it for. They're not doing it for us. They're it's, doing it because they can make a good amount of money doing the that work. That, that's fi I, fine with me. And I've told everybody, people like that are in business for themselves. They're not here to help us. You know, I used to get big million share orders all the time. And my friends on the desk, is the guy going to pay up? I'm like, I don't know. You just sit there. and I, I, My job is instructed to accumulate this stock. And not drive it higher, you know, because everyone wants to know, are you going to run it up? Are you going to pay higher? You know, that's the game. But these guys want to get it for themselves. I told you, Wall Street's about pennies. Right. Pennies right. add up quickly. Just go back and look at all the stocks that if you just made pennies on them every day, you would sit there and say, wow, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, you but know? it's tough. You know, like when I, again, my when I see the options, I want to make $19 million. And it's hard for me to make two hundred and forty-five dollars. It's tough. <laughs> well, I used to trade them. You know, I would trade thousands of calls. Like I said, if I bought a call at a dollar and they go one twenty bid, I would sell fifty of them at one twenty. Now I own fifty at eighty cents. Right? If it goes to one fifty, I could sell twenty-five, and now I own calls and I just keep going down lower. I just made another fifty cents. Now I own twenty-five calls at thirty cents or twenty cents, whatever the number was. Right? Yeah. And that's where I keep lowering my risk on these things. That's the way I was taught. Because at any given time, the market can crash, the stock goes down, and your options go worthless, and you, you don't even get a, you know, you don't even get a drink and it's over with. Yeah. Except somehow I uh exercise I don't even know how I did it. I inadvertently exercised finger options on uh Friday. That was my great play. At least they were six dollars. So you're long uh, at six. Yeah, I'm long at six uh, for with a couple thousand shares. I really didn't think I was going to get, but I, <laughs> when I, yeah. So maybe tomorrow, you know, we'll see. That we'll 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 see the uh, spirit in the world. If tomorrow we go up to two 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 hundred and fifty, then it was a good uh, exercise. Right. Uh, hey, we'll, listen. Yeah. You could always when the stock opens tomorrow, you. I could sell them. Price, yeah, I could. You could yeah. sell the stock. Yeah. You can sell an option against the stock, right? Right. You can protect yourself and buy a put if you like. There's a hundred things you could do using options to hedge. Yeah, may, I, I was thinking maybe the universe was telling me something. And uh, no, so. just, listen, you have to, you know, open your eyes to whatever what, whatever protects you. You have to protect you and your family. That's what this is about. Right. Right. Listen, I'm not in the business of here trying to trade for three thousand people at a clip. All I can do is base is give you the information. We know who the short is. We know the, sh the front is Lynn Partners. Who's behind it? I don't know. Who's doing it? Where they're doing it? I don't know. We know they're doing it offshore because you right. have to have some pair of balls to stand there when we're parking the trunk at the FBI, the DOJ. You got to be insane to do that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, you really. So we don't know, or I don't know what the hell's going to happen here. But again, this has gotten very viral. And, you know, I feel bad that people lost money in options. I'd rather lose my money than lose your money. Trust me, it bothers me when you lose your money. I Believe me, I tried my best to try to protect everyone as best I can. I can't do it. It's just yeah. we're fighting, you know, a criminal organization that is a monster. And I've been telling you that, that this is a battle. This is not just a, you know, a little squirmish. You know, this is a, this is a, a real battle. I've been doing it for 23 years. And I've seen it all, okay? That doesn't make me that I'm going to be able to pick every naked short squeeze in the world. I address GameStop, of, you know, while well, people would, had no idea what they were talking about. I was talking about naked short selling and how big the short was in the stock, all right? I didn't care about their fundamentals. I didn't care about what they did or anything about it. So I, I was trying to open an exchange overseas, and I did a report on it also that I sent out to 300 hedge funds. I sent it to everybody. I, I emailed it to everybody. So again, 
I put my name and my stamp on it a long time ago. I picked many short squeeze stocks. And many, many people here who follow me know I did it. You know, I picked stocks that ran a lot. Okay. But I'm right. not in the business of doing that. I'm not here to help you. I'm just trying to help you stay alive and understand it. Okay. But again, I do feel that the two names that I follow because of education and trapping the scumbags, as we call them, and <laughs> partners, the other deviants, you know, these guys are trapped themselves. They can't help themselves. They thought they can wear us out. That's what right. the game is about. That's it. Yeah, it seems like we reached a tipping point and we survived. And if we survive, they lose that's ultimately. Cool. That's how that's how you gotta look at it. Again, I didn't sign up to buy a stock and then have to defend it or to expect everyone on these calls to do it. But it's unfortunate that the U.S. equity market is like so many things are wrong with this country that the U.S. equity market gives so many people a chance to make money and to make their lives better. And they just basically robbing everybody, just just straight robbing everyone. And if I didn't, if I didn't say anything, no one would ever know anything. You're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> hopefully that will change that's all we can we can hope and I, um i in my heart i think it's going to change and i think it's going to work out big and, and i think I do, you know and I, and I do think that mmtlp is is the shining star here you can't make any money on it but i think it will help the stocks that are on the front line and i don't think there's any two stocks in the front line that are more well known than fngr and gtii yeah, I, I think that MMTLP going and and, discl and you know making an illustration of how corrupt the system is will really be the the switch that will kind of put the light on all the other ones that are screwed and and the the system the systemic problem and oh. and hope hopefully we'll get rid of uh, Gensler and replace him with somebody better. Hopefully we'll get regulators that do their job. Hopefully the regulators won't be in working for the markets. Well, I think that the problem is that they all know it exists. Go back. Chris Cox knew in 2007, whatever they had that video where he talks about it's crime. New, new, you know, uh, they all knew about it. All these, I went through, I think I went through eight SEC commissioners. They all know about it. Some people called him, by the way, a Cox sucker. <laughs> well, they can call him whatever they like. He knows about it. He it's very difficult for him to go to the Senate or the Senate banking and say, hey, you know, the whole system's full of counterfeit shares. What do you want to do about this? It's a political hand grenade, as we call it, right? Who wants right. it? You know, right. someone's gonna have to eventually step out and take this hit. And he had unfortunately he's getting it on his watch. That's what's happening. Yeah. But you know he's he comes from uh, Harvard Law, Goldman Sachs. So his interests don't lie with retail shareholders; they lie with you know the the ones he's protecting, in essence. Well, they're using the law as an attorney. You know it. They're using yeah. the rules that were set up, and they just and this is what they do: they navigate the rules that are set up. And until someone gets charged criminally, this is what you have. So we yeah. have to do it upon. There is nobody, so you understand this, no one's going to come and help the shorts and GTI and finger motion. This is like, this is like penny ante to these guys, you know, a, a, a big stock like a, a DeVita DVA or, you know, or a Shopify. Right. Those guys will get people to help them or, you know, a riot or a uh, beyond BYND or TLRY. These are too small. These guys are low. These are small criminals in the scheme of things. Don't get me wrong. They created big messes, but they're small. I think, by the way, that NVIDIA should change its name because nobody can pronounce the way they spell it, in my opinion. Um, it's a great, great stock, but poorly spelled, in my opinion. That's all. Well, that is a stock that everyone should paper trade options. Go out tomorrow. Pick a strike or a put, whatever one you want to see. See what you pay for it. Make, write it down. Say, I'm going to buy the October, you know, 460 calls at, you know, $15 tomorrow on the opening. And see what happens in two weeks. Or I think they're one-week options in that stock. You know, every each week the casino opens up in NVIDIA. It's each week as the options expire. Right. See what happens to your calls. Learn how to trade them. If they go up, 
sell them, see if you're going to buy them back. Paper trade, write down exactly what you do. Let's see how good you do. You've been very generous with your time, and, and, and I know you're not home, so I don't want to take too much more of your time. I want to know if JR has uh, any – were you going to ask I, – I, I did. I wanted to go back to something you said because it sparked a question and something I've been thinking about. And Richard and I talked about this maybe one time a few months ago. But, Ham, don't you think it's odd that you, you drive that truck up there, you put that truck in front of the SEC, God knows what it says, but it's not flattering about Lynn Partners and the Kramers and all that other, all the other folks that are involved in this. But not once since you've been doing this have you gotten any kind of cease and desist letter. No one's filed a lawsuit against whoever's paying for the truck up there. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Obviously... <laughs> No, one wants to <laughs> I know what they are, but I want I want I want you I want the community to think they, to, to hear they, it. They they're afraid of that. You know, we have attorneys and we're waiting because we want discovery. We want to see their right. phone records. We want to see their contacts, uh, uh, their market makers. We want to see their bank records. We want to see where they get their money from. Obviously, both of these criminals, the Lynn and the Kramers, every stock they invested in has gone straight down. How do they make money if their stocks are going straight down? The right. money they lend companies, they never get the money back. How do they make money? So obviously we all know what they do. They made mistakes. If The mistakes may not be the last year, but going back three years, four years, when these guys were having a party, looting away, I'm sure that the paper trail always leads to the money. And the money's going to lead back to Lynn Partner's pocket. He's not doing it for free. The Kramers don't do it for free. Sabby wasn't doing it for free. He wanted to buy a $10 million condo. So he basically exposed himself and he got busted because he went deeper in trying to steal more money, right? Right. And they, and they all do the same thing. So uh, in speaking with many attorneys, and we do have many attorneys around that are waiting, they've asked the same question and they're all sitting here waiting to see if anyone does get served because they're going to go right back at them as fast as, as fast as possible. Discovery is discovery will expose everything. Yeah. I'm that's that's what I'm trying in my arbitration. So we will see what happens. Somebody asked a question about uh the AST MMTLP. I don't think you know anything about that, Ham, do you? No, I do not. Okay. And somebody also asked a question about the S3 when it would be effective. I don't we know. Do, yeah, we don't know, but we when in looking at kind of the standards. Generally, from the time it's filed within 10 days, but can be significantly longer. The S3s are much more, much simpler than the S1s. So there's generally less issues. So could be any day, could be a week, could be Where a couple of weeks. What, what day was it filed? I don't know. The 11th, September 11th. Yeah. So we've got to be getting close. So yeah, we're, we're going to be at a week but tomorrow. But again, if you want to time that, you know the timing. I don't need to tell you. You know it as well as I do. They filed it on the 11th, 10 days. You know, you you pick a day. I don't know. Yeah. It, it may be like you will wake up one morning and we'll have a very big smile on our face. Well, just remember this. And, you know, I, I know I, I, have to, I have to move along, but I've always told everyone, when you invest in a stock, if the story or the reason why you're in the stock hasn't changed, all right, then, then there's no reason to exit. If the fundamentals or whatever is the reason you're in the stock has changed dramatically, then you should exit no matter what stock it is. So think about the only thing that's changed in finger motion was option expiration. That was it. And it has nothing to do with the stock, has nothing to do with the short, and has nothing to do with the company. So what has changed? Nothing. Well, right. we, we I, I want to thank you for your time. The community thanks you for the time. Of course, I have to indicate that, because somebody asked me to, that Clemson's minus seven over FSU this uh, weekend. That's so, impossible. Just, tell that guy stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a pl just save it by two and a half, I think. Okay. Well, that was that's what I can't, uh, I don't vouch for anybody. So uh, <laughs> anyway, we really appreciate. We really appreciate your time. Uh, we hope that you liked the format. It was a little different than you normally no, get no, to do. Listen, I, listen I, I, I straightforward. I'll answer all the questions. I don't duck in the questions. So people understand this. The people on the other side of this coin are not happy what's going on. This is a dangerous game. 
I've had my life threatened five times already. Again, this is not fun. This is not something that I want to do every day with my life. I'm doing it because I feel like I have to do it. All right. I'm not going away. That's just the way it is. Again, win, lose a draw. I, I can't help hold everyone's hand. If you can't afford it financially, please move along and don't ever come back to the equity markets. It's too dangerous. I tell you that on all stocks, they manipulate everything. So unless you know how to trade around the manipulation, don't don't look at this as a place for income. You're better off in a Bitcoin. Go learn about that or something. It's it's safer and you can trade it 24 hours a day. That's how I feel. And I'm not a Bitcoin guy. I've always been an equity guy. I know how to navigate the criminals. All right. But I, it's hard for me to t teach you that I'm trying to teach you, but it's too hard. It's, it's a, over too many people's heads. It's, it's a tough game. You, you're talking about 40 years experience and you guys have six weeks experience. A year. <laughs> you're right. You right. know, this is right. You know, I go back and look at it. If you, if you, if you go back and read up about the Korea war, the Korean war, we took soldiers that they were doing basic training on the ships going over there. And it turned out to be one of the worst battles we ever had in our life in American history because guys weren't trained properly. Yeah. They had to learn on the fly. So this is what this is about. And I keep bringing battles into it because it is a battle. All right. This is something that, you know, I'm not a history buff by I'm just trying to relay something so that you guys would understand this is a war. But if we win we will be we will be the kings trust me this is a life changing situation and that's why the battle is so hard pat yeah. Burns stock was $30 i had bought calls because i knew he was doing his dividend they crushed it to three i got wiped out it went from 3 to 128 express right behind after i lost my options so i know the pain of losing options i watched it go from three, 30 to 3 three to 128 and I lost money. So again, it sucks. It's part of the game. We're dealing with criminals and you know what? You can't come back if you don't have the money. If you go to a casino and you tell them you want to bet a thousand dollars on a blackjack hand, they go, you got to put your money up. Oh, I, can I just owe it to you? <laughs> no, you're out. That's just the way it goes. That's the same thing with the stock market. So staying alive, building a position, you have to figure out how to do it yourself. But again, I try to give you many tips on how to do that. So, and we 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 appreciate it. And just know that uh, Jr. and myself and all the people here tonight, we're all with our goals are all the same. We're yes. all trying to get equity in the equity markets and to make sure that it's fair for everybody. And we appreciate the role that you play. And anytime you want to come back, or anytime you want to, you know, you have questions for us. Feel free to call on us, and we really enjoyed the time. And uh, good luck on your trip this week, and right. be well. Thank and you very well. much. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ham. Take yeah. care. And to, to everybody else out there, we really appreciate you being here today. We're going to be back tomorrow night at uh, 7 Eastern uh, with Astra Energy, uh, Frank Benedetto, and the CEO. Uh, should be interesting also. Also a naked shorting issue. Um, so we will see you then. Thanks again for hanging out. Everybody be well. See you, see you tomorrow night. Take care. Have a good night. Take care, everybody.